Hey, hey YouTube fans, Mike Palumbo from the beach. And before I uh, crack open a cold one and a light up a stogie, I want to make some quick content about uh, Easy Pass. It's a nightmare. I want to talk specifically about the notice of suspension. If you're pending suspension and you found this channel, you're in luck. I'm going to tell you exactly how to avoid suspension, even if you can't pay the Easy Pass fees. All right. Um, hopefully, you've gotten this. You've seen this, but you're still timely to do something about it. Some people call me, they're already suspended, or there's nothing I can do to get them to, to, to stop the suspension, okay? It all starts with the suspension notice. Now, people get it, and they freak out, and they don't pay attention to it. It's a one-page document, but it has a lot of information on it. Now, let me just highlight what you need to look for. There's, there's, there's a couple things. The first thing is, on the notice, again, it's only a one-page document, it tells you the date you're going to be suspended. And there's another date on it. There's a date you could demand a hearing by. And if you don't demand it timely, you're going to be suspended on a suspension date. And they give you like two or three weeks to demand a hearing and like a month before you're suspended. So you got plenty of time if you got it timely and, you know, if you opened it and you didn't ignore it. Demand the hearing. No matter what, demand the hearing. On the form, you just look at the bottom of the form, it gives you the instructions on how to demand the hearing. You got to basically fill out your name and address. Check and check off you want a hearing by teleconference. Hearing by teleconference. You're never going to do the hearing. You're never going to go to the hearing. You're never going to. I'm never going to even offer you a service to represent you because you would lose. You demand it. You fax it in. The fax number's on it. It's very easy to do this. It's, you don't need a lawyer to do this. Why are you going to do that if you're never going to show up at the hearing? Because it stays the suspension. Stays. Temporarily stops it. So you're not going to set up a hearing date tomorrow. It's going to take them a month and a half, a month to even get you a notice of hearing. They're going to send you a hearing date. That's going to be another two, three months down the road. So already now you bought yourself four months. You're still driving your car. If you haven't resolved the problem by then, um, you could ask for one adjournment. That's going to be another two, three months. So you're buying yourself six to eight months just by demanding the hearing. In that intervening time, you got to work on the problem. Now, that suspension notice tells you some more information. In the middle of it, it's going to say MTA or Port Authority. It could say New York State Thruway Authority, but I've never seen them suspend anybody yet. It's going to say MTA or Port Authority. That's telling you that you may owe money to both agencies. You probably do. But if it says Port Authority, that's telling you it's the Port Authority that's triggering this suspension. So they're the more critical agency that you have to deal with. You should also deal with the MTA and the other, any other towing agency because it's just going to come down the pike for you. They're going to suspend you too. But that's the more critical bill you have to pay. Understand, Easy Pass is not Easy Pass. Easy Pass is the collection agent or the administrator for the tolling authorities. So, um, so you know, the the one that you want to deal with is initially is the one on that form. And it's very confusing, it's very complex. Again, that's where I come in. I've been representing people. 100% of the people I've represented, I've resolved their problems. So let's just say you really have no money. I mean, there are some people that just cannot afford anything. They can't afford to pay anything. They can't afford to pay anything. They just can't afford to pay on a payment plan because I will get it reduced. I've I got some other videos. I get it reduced, I get you on a payment plan. Okay, what else can you do? You're gonna lose your car. I mean, you're not going to physically lose your car, but you're going to have to get her off the road, hand the plates in, you can't drive it legally. Um, so what do you do? If you're married, and they say, oh, this has to happen before you're suspended, okay? The easy thing to do if you're married is if, the, if it's titled just to you, transfer it to ownership to your spouse. That's, you know, because from a legal person, now you could transfer ownership to anybody, but let's say you do it to your mother. Now your mother has liability, your mother owns the car. But if it's a spouse, you're kind of legally and economically one of the same anyhow, so it doesn't matter. So if, let's say you and your spouse are on it. We'll just take your name off it, off the registration. But you got to, basically you're gifting the car to your spouse. And what you have to do is you got to take the title into the DMV. You got to hand those plates in. You have to go get a, you know, get insurance, put her, make sure your spouse's name is on the insurance policy if it already isn't. And, and, and there's a gift form you can use so you don't got to pay any, any sales taxes. Even if you gift the car to somebody, you got to use a gift form. Because if you just sell the car to someone for $1, they're 
they still got to pay sales tax on the market value of the car. I have the form. So if, if you see this and you want to transfer ownership to somebody else, email me. I'll have my email. I'll have my, my link, my phone number. I can send you the form. Okay. It's a very good thing to do when, when you know, you're married. Maybe a, a parent, you know, but again, there's liability on a part of that. You know, now that, that parent, if it's, you get a transfer to a parent, they got to get insurance in their name. You know, it, become, it becomes cumbersome. Sometimes if you lease it or if you're paying on time, then you got to deal with the bank or the leasing company. If you lease it, maybe the best thing to do is just hand it in. If you're leasing a car, you can't afford to pay the tolls. You can't afford to pay to fix the problem, right? If you're doing that, if you're leasing a car and you're doing that, you can't afford the car anyhow. And, and nowadays, cars are worth more than what probably what the lease value is. So, you, so maybe you just hand it in, sell it, or, or whatever. But if you're going to transfer title, you're going to deal, you're gonna deal with the leasing company. Maybe you're making payments on it. Now, if there's a co-signer and you're making payments on it, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be a very easy thing just to transfer title to the, to the co-signer because they're really on the hook anyhow. The reason why it's a co-signer is because the bank knew that you couldn't afford to pay it. They're the really ones on the hook, not you. But again, if it's just you and, you know, you, you got you to gotta work it out with the bank, you know, to transfer title. So transferring title is a good option, but, you know, unless you own the car outright, it could be cumbersome to do. These are all things to do, you know, in the intervening time to prevent you from, you know, the use of your car. But you got to fix the problem, okay? Because even if you say, oh, you know what, I'm going to transfer title to my wife. I own the car outright. Screw them. They're going to sue you. It's, it never ends. You're just not going to get suspended right now. To recap, you get that suspension notice. There's three very important pieces of information on it. A suspension date, a date to demand uh, a hearing. And uh, in the middle of it, there, it'll say the MTA or Port Authority. That's the tolling agency that's, that is suspending you. And that's the more important one to deal with. Uh, to avoid getting suspended in the intervening time, uh, the way it's doing is transferring ownership. Again, and by the way, you can sell the car too. Before it gets suspended, you can actually legitimately sell it. But you can transfer ownership to a spouse or a third party. Um, and if it's leased, you get, you get handed in or you, you can sell the vehicle. These, these are your options to, to, to stop you know, that, that, that problem from kicking in. Those are your immediate options. At the end of the day, it's good to do that, but you got to deal with the problem. All right, you just got to deal with the problem. Again, it's Mike Palumbo. I mean, these easy pass things are a nightmare. Uh, give me a call. I'll help you work it out. I'll get the re I'll save you tens of thousands of dollars. Get you on a payment plan if you need a payment plan. Make sure your vehicle doesn't get suspended. If it's if it's not suspended, uh, make sure if it is suspended, we'll get you back on the road. Uh, information in my my contact info will be below.